Our top story. A New York jury found Donald Trump liable for sexually abusing and defaming a former magazine columnist and ordered the ex-president to pay her $5 million in damages. The nine jurors rejected E. Jean Carroll's accusation of rape but upheld her other complaints in a, vo in a trial that has been closely watched across the United States. It marks the first time that Donald Trump has faced legal consequences over a string of sexual assault allegations dating back decades. The former U.S. president immediately rejected the verdict as a disgrace. 79-year-old Carol sued Trump last year, alleging that he raped her in a changing room of a luxury store on Manhattan's Fifth Avenue in 1996. The former columnist for Elle magazine also claimed that Trump defamed her when he called her a complete con job after she went public with the allegation in 2019. Trump, the 76-year-old frontrunner for the Republican nomination in the next year's presidential election, called her a hoax and a lie. Slamming the outcome of the civil lawsuit brought by E. Jean Carroll, the former U.S. president said, and I quote, I have absolutely no idea who this woman is. Lawyers for the writer called, the two, uh, called two other women to the witness stand to testify that uh, they, they, they in fact testify that Trump sexually assaulted them decades ago. Former businesswoman Jessica Leeds said that Trump groped her in the business class section of a flight in the United States in the 1970s. Journalist Natasha Stoyanov said that Trump kissed her without her consent during an interview at his Mar-a-Lago estate in 2005. Now, it's important to note here is that no criminal case can stem from Carol's lawsuit. I know. <laughs> Joining us to discuss the ramifications of this uh, case and the verdict is Stephen Golub, a lawyer and a political analyst. He's joining us from California. Thanks very much, sir for speaking to us. Thanks for having me. So first, let's talk about the case and the verdict and the larger message that it sends on cases of sexual assault. Although the jurors rejected the allegation of rape, they have found Trump liable for sexual assault. Now, E. Jean Carroll was also allowed during this uh, case to introduce two witnesses, two women with no connection to the alleged events. So do you welcome this verdict? Oh, I think it's very, very significant in a number of ways. Even Fox News, our very conservative and usually pro-Trump news outlet, had one commentator saying today that this is big news and bad news for Trump. It's big news and good news for the justice system in that Donald Trump was brought to justice after evading it in so many ways, in so many forums for years, not least being impeached twice by the U.S. Congress, but not convicted in the U.S. Senate. It's a big news and a big victory for women who, whose stories or whose accurate reporting on being raped or being sexual, sexually assaulted often is dismissed for reasons such as, oh, you didn't scream while he was doing this to you. That's exactly what Trump's lawyer was accusing uh, Ms. Carroll of doing, or rather of not doing, when this attack took place. And she explained, no, not all women scream when they're being accosted, when they're being abused, or when they're being raped. So on a number of levels, both legally and in terms of social justice and social progress, this is a big case and a big victory. So some Republican strategists are saying that uh, this civil verdict is not likely to have an impact on Trump's core supporters in these elections that are going to happen, or it won't affect the ambivalent voters as well. Do you agree with that assessment? Hmm, I half agree. I think it's likely it won't affect most Republican voters, but U.S. elections are one on the margins these days. So while Trump may still have a very good chance of winning the Republican nomination, this could affect the people in certain key states, perhaps particularly women, who otherwise might have been on the fence about whether to vote for Trump or not. But after seeing this happen, after seeing him being held liable, after seeing a jury convict him, 
may have second thoughts and may lean towards the Democratic candidate, which will likely be President Biden. And those women who will occupy the margins or the middle ground, I should say, may decide what swings the election against Trump and for Biden in November of next year. Sir, talk to us a little more about the political landscape in the United States at the moment. You know, Trump became the first U.S. president, past or present, to be criminally charged when he was charged in New York in March with uh, falsifying business records over a hush money payment to porn star Stormy Daniels. Yet his poll numbers improved. What does this tell us about the polarized political climate in America? Well, as, you, as your question implies, it tells us that it's very polarized. But I think... There are a few things to keep in mind here. Perhaps one thing is that it's not just Republican strategists, but some Democrats are saying this won't alter the balance, that uh, this won't hurt him among Republicans. It may not make much of a difference down the line. I tend to view it differently. I think what a lot of people are missing is how much this, this energizes the opposition to Trump, how much it shows people that, yes, this would be dictator, that may not be too strong a word, but certainly authoritarian, uh, can lose. You know, for a long time, he's just been very slippery in terms of evading responsibility, evading accountability for the most part, no matter what he's done. Back in his business uh, career, when he, uh, when he, the firm he was with, his own firm, uh, committed some really egregious uh, racial uh, crimes against, not crimes, but evaded the law in terms of discrimination against minorities in the apartments he owned uh, in other ways over the years. And for the first time, he really got nailed for one of his egregious acts. And I think that really energizes people. Someone like Trump, a, a would-be dictator, profits not just by mobilizing his base, but by convincing the rest of society, including his opponents, that he can't lose in any really meaning, meaningful way, that he can get away with anything. This verdict proves that he can't get away with just with anything, with everything. And I think by virtue of that, it's a real shot in the arm to people who are opposed to him and will have ramifications down the line in terms of the general election if he's nominated. So one final question coming back to this case, you called it a big victory uh, for women in this case, but this is just one step. How much more does, uh, this, uh, does this have to go for women to actually, you know, come out and share the experience, the, the experience that they have had uh, with powerful men uh, of sexual assault, of rape? Uh, you know, this is just one step. Uh, Donald Trump didn't even put up a defense case thinking that his, her testimony will not even stand in court. Uh, well, I think it, it, that's a very good question. It's a continuing struggle, a continuing educational process. It doesn't end in some respects, but this is a step forward in that this woman, uh, Ms. Carroll, was very brave to, to come out and say this, even though she knew she'd be blasted on social media, she'd get all sorts of th threats against her person, but she went ahead and did it. And I can't speak for women in the United States or anywhere, but I would think that this would show women that being brave, even despite, even given the odds against them, even the biases against them, is something that for their particular circumstances is worth doing and hopefully educating the men in the society as well uh, about this, that this is something that strengthens women's hands in dealing with sexual abuse abusers such as Donald Trump. All right, uh, Stephen Golub, thanks very much for joining us with your perspective on this story. Thank you.